the Purpose Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. We're all about delivering great content, thoughtful discussions, and tips and tricks to help you truly get the most out of your life and business. And here's your charismatic host, me, Matt Brown. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. And welcome. Uh, of course, we're doing this live on Facebook. So if you're seeing this on the video, hello, good to see you. Um, and of course, if you listen to this on the stream or the download, thank you so much for that. Um, I want to jump into kind of the nuggets for today, for this week. Um, I was driving home uh, today. Just uh, I got home about half an hour ago, so I'm hanging out in the backyard right now. So if you hear those birds chirping or the wind blowing, that's the backyard. You can, if you're on the video, you can kind of see the pool in the background. I know the uh, the what should I call it? The sun is a little bit uh, interesting to watch. Nonetheless, today. I was thinking, so I was driving home, it was about 90 miles away, uh, I was speaking at just a phenomenal mastermind, so I want to plug this uh, Christian Michelson, um, if you haven't met him before, he's a phenomenal person, uh, great coach and a great coach to coaches, and uh, we've been getting to know each other better over the last few years, and he invited me to come speak uh, and teach to a really, his high-end exclusive mastermind, it wasn't a, a selling spot or something like that, uh, these are It was a very, very high-end, very well-done mastermind. So I just want to put props out to Christian. Um, Great job on what you've been creating and doing over the years. Uh, I got to also spend time, have lunch with the participants. And yeah, I just got to spend an hour just teaching and training on NLP and how to influence from stage. Uh, I I think everyone loved it. Uh, They certainly said so. I loved it. We just had a great time uh, teaching and connecting. So thank you again for that. Um, so reach out and find him, uh, find him on social media, a uh, phenomenal person. Well, it was a room full of coaches, right? Coaches, practitioners, speakers, and a lot of people, some of them were starting out. Some of them have been very well, fairly well established and anywhere in between. What I started thinking about was our journey of entrepreneurship and from where we start, wherever that is for me, um, well, I was going to say 12 years. I've been doing the coaching business of Evolution for 12 years, since 2006. But I started my first business in uh, 2002. So what is that, four years and a half or so more? So 15, 16 years, not, not an incredibly long time, but I started when I was 21, almost 22, and I'm 38 now. So I don't think I'm anywhere near the end of my career. Right? I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a mature entrepreneur. But I also wouldn't say I'm fresh, you know what I mean? Um, I think we're somewhere in in that road. So here's my question I have for you. And I'm curious, if you haven't already, if you're watching this live or even on an archive, um, comment below, what's the purpose of entrepreneurship? What's the purpose of of starting your own business? Uh, Whether you're a coach, speaker, author, you know, that kind of space, or whether you're a service provider um, or, or, or a retail business or anything else you're doing, what's the purpose of starting it? Number one, what should you be spending your time doing throughout the days? Some people, there's some people in the camp that say you should be working hard, right? So it's kind of like the purpose in the beginning is hard work. Other people say the purpose is freedom, right? And freedom is is all about, um, you know, freedom of time, freedom of schedule, freedom of you choose what to do. It's your vision, right? Your, Your identity, everything. However you want to do it, you can do it. Don't be told what to do. Don't be stuck in a cubicle. So my question is, which one's accurate? And when I describe it like that, what most people say is they'll go, oh yeah, no, you got to work hard in business. Like that's, you know, that's a good value, right? You know, hustle, work hard. Cause you got people like the rock out there, you know, who are, it's all about hustle, working your butt off, getting the rewards. And I love that. But I got to tell you, it, it wasn't too long ago that there was a time that you didn't have the guys like The Rock, you know, with this influence of, of you know, hustling and working and, and getting the job done, get up early, bang and clang at the gym, that kind of thing. I th- to me, I think trailing off from like the 80s into the 90s, it was a lot of the, I don't want to say get rich quick because that's not the right exact mentality, but it was a lot of, hey, I'm going to build this business for me so I get whatever I want. I get my freedom. I want to ha- own my own business so I can sleep in. So I can spend more time with my family. So I can go out on the boat and go to the lake, right? It, it, that kind of a thing. It's lifestyle. And 
And I think again through the 80s and 90s a lot of a lot of people got drawn into this dream of business is about the lifestyle, right? There's a lot of mentors and coaches even in my space that that you know I I train in uh at seminars and whatnot that literally sell the idea of a lifestyle friendly business, right? Get into coaching because it's a lucrative lifestyle business. Um uh run seminars so you can, you know, make an impact but make a lot of money do online marketing, right? And do online marketing and do webinars and do Facebook ads and do all these sort of things, right? All this digital world so that you can have your toes in the sand and work off of your laptop in Hawaii. Amway really started in a lot of ways, a lot of, in fact, a lot of network marketing companies or MLM companies or uh, direct sales, whatever you want to call them, right? They're all different frames. Um, But, you know, the uh, multi-level approach, a lot of the companies, and I'm not calling anyone out in particular, but a lot of the companies have really grown through the marketing, not so much of, um, of the product itself, but of the dream, which is, hey, if you do this enough, you'll have your toes in the sand, so to speak. So when I think about it, you know, I, I think there's probably truth to both sides. Sure, right? There, there's, there's the thing, of course, you got to work hard, but then you also want the freedom. What I like to do is I just want to talk about where each one fits in on the journey of your business. And I think if, if, you, if this makes sense to you, again, comment below and let me know what you think. Maybe which one's more important. And I know it's a hard question to answer because they both make sense. But follow me along with this conversation and, and see, if, see if you follow how, where I'm taking it. So I think when you look at a business or you look at, let's call it not a business, let's call it an entrepreneur, okay? This is the person, the visionary, the leader, the founder, uh, the person who has a dream to start something, right? That's what, that's what the new book is all about. I've been working on this book nonstop. The, have I told you about it yet? I don't think I have completely. The book's titled The Firebox Principle, The Seven Drives That Fuel Every Entrepreneur. And the release date is looking like... We haven't made it public yet, but why don't I do it now? July 13th, the ebook will be released on Amazon. And August 13th, the hardcover uh, will be released, and we're gonna, I'm going to start doing a book tour throughout the summer. The whole premise of the book is it's for the person who sees themselves as a founder, visionary, leader, entrepreneur. So whether it's uh, an influencer, like someone who runs an Instagram, blogging, YouTube website business, uh, or it's a, someone who's founding a, a nonprofit, a movement, a charity, a church, or whether it's someone who wants to be the next uh, you know, uh, Tom Shoes or Elon Musk of the world. Those are vastly different people, but you know what I mean. There's something in these people that have been successful that drives them inside. And I think sometimes we get lost in the idea that we want this lifestyle business, right? We want this lifestyle of freedom, uh, of getting what we want or making money and everything. But what do we have to do to accomplish it? What's the real value inside of, of an entrepreneur and inside of building a business? Well, think of it like this. So for me, again, it's not about how old my business is, but I think of not my 12 years in, in the evolution and coaching business, but in the 16, almost 17 years of me being this entrepreneur person who wants to create something. I haven't had a paycheck. Gosh, that's crazy. 16, yeah, going on 17 years, I haven't had a, a regular paycheck except for ones that I've put myself on salary. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't trade any of it. I love it. It's, it, it's amazing. I think you have, as an entrepreneur, you have the beginning, right? Your baby steps. You have the middle life, your, your adolescence or teenage years. And then you have the twilight of, of your career. And you've probably either, you either are or you've probably known someone who's been at different phases in their entrepreneur career. You know someone's in the early stage because they're hungry. They're, they're, they can't be stopped. These are the people that, you, at this stage, you should be a dreamer. You should be excited. You should have a fire in your belly, a passion in your heart, right? Like you should talk nonstop about your dream, about the thing that you want to do. Even if you don't know what you want to do, you want to accomplish something and, and, you don't, and you can't be stopped, right? You lay your head down at night on your pillow and you dream about this enterprise, this, this movement, this foundation you want to start. And that should, should spark the early years. So what's more important in the early years? Lifestyle and freedom or hard work and hustle? My opinion, you don't have to agree with it, but my opinion is hard work and hustle. 
When I think about freedom in business, I do have a lot of freedom. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, when I look like, I mean, I, my wife and I are, are, are in ministry, you know, part-time at least, if not nearly full-time, right? We've been leading our, our local church campus for uh, over the last year, year 15, 16 months. And it's been amazing. But what's beautiful is I've created the freedom in the business that as busy as life is, we also have, have been able to make time to be volunteer pastors and not have to, or how, however you want to say that, right? Volunteering in a ministry and not being paid by the church. And it's just a beautiful thing to have the, the chance to do that, right? The opportunity to do that. Um, I get to go in on Thursday afternoons, and I'd like to go more, but I go in once a week and volunteer at Vowel School in first grade and read stories to the kids. And uh, it, it's, it's amazing. So I, I get a lot of freedom today, but part of it is because freedom was a goal for me. It wasn't the reason to be in business. Does that make sense? Like if you want to go into business and the next thing you say is, I want to go in business to be free because I'm sick of this job. Um, I'm sick of being in, in the cubicle working eight to five. Trust me, you'll turn or nine to five. You'll turn in your nine to five job. And then get an 8 to 9 business, right? 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. We, As entrepreneurs, we should be probably working far harder than we ever would for somebody else, for ourselves, and usually making less. My first business, I mean, I probably made an average of about 3 or $4 an hour, the reality is. And I worked my tail off for it. But the question is, is it worth it? So to me, where hustle and where hard work goes versus where freedom and lifestyle goes, in the early years, it's hustle and it's hard work. And if you're willing to do that, you can build something. But you got to be willing to, to, to put in the effort and time. And, and I'm not talking about you know, having a limiting belief around, well, when did you decide it had to be hard? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it won't be enjoyable, right? But like when you, if you go to the gym and you're really tearing down and rebuilding muscles and you're working, it's hard work. It's, it's rewarding, it's awesome, but you're going to sweat, you're going to get dirty, it's going to be tough, and you got to scratch and claw and make it happen. So early on in my real estate career, man, I, I worked my butt off. I met and networked everywhere I could. I sent out cards constantly to anyone I ever knew. Um, I spent a ton of time with people. I was hitting the phones cold calling like crazy, and then I hired people to cold call, and I'm leading them, and I'm figuring this thing out out of my two-bedroom uh, condo down in Newport Beach, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm making it happen. And little by little, I started building that business. And then almost five years later, I got honestly tired of that. And I said, I want to do something different that makes a different kind of impact. So I started the coaching business and it was the same thing. I would go speak anywhere and everywhere I could. I spoke at meetups. Uh, I spoke at, at local events. Every, I spoke at birthday parties, uh, three people, 10 people, two people. I spoke at places that no one showed up. And then I was like, I'm doing this anyway. So I, well, I didn't give my presentation, but I should have. I should have. Now, but what I did is, is I just, I, I spoke everywhere I could. I traveled everywhere I could. And that's the life of, of hard work and hustle in the beginning. If you're willing to put up a fight, if you're willing to, to again, I, I just keep saying, work your tail off and feel good about it, right? I've never came home from the gym and, and thought to myself, dang it, I wish I didn't go work out today. Have you ever done that? Most people don't. And I also haven't come back from a hard day of work early on in an enterprise or a vision and thought, man, I wish I didn't work so much on this thing. Now, later in business, I might have some of those regrets. If I'm working 12, 15, 18 hour days constantly, regularly, and I've sacrificed not seeing my family and missing my kid growing up, 20 years later, I'm probably going to look back and go, man, I wish I didn't work so hard. Do you follow what I mean? So think of it as early on, hard work and hustle is a good thing. And freedom should honestly be very little in my opinion. As we transition to a middle road, and this is kind of where I find myself now after you know, more than a decade, a uh, decade and a half doing business in some way or another, I find myself firmly in the middle where I do want to have a lot of freedom. So I've learned to say no to a lot of things that in the beginning, the first couple of years of business, I would say yes to everything. You want me to speak? Yes. You want me to interview on your thing? Yes. You want me to talk to your, your three friends at, the, at your grandma's senior center? I'm in, right? I'll do whatever it takes. But now I, have, you know, I, get, I get invitations, and I don't mean this in anything other than I'm humble about it. I think you, if you listen to me or watch you, you know who I am. Um, but the truth is I do get a lot of invitations to speak and to, to teach and to go places, 
And now I have to make the decision of, okay, let's see, is this sponsorship worth these three days of my life? Well, what's it going to yield? What's the, what's the return? What does it look like? Um, this, this new joint venture opportunity, this new person I want to have coffee with, where is this going to go? So I've learned to say no to a lot of potential meetings. In the beginning, maybe I had 10 opportunities a month of something to meet someone or to go somewhere, so I'm going to say yes to everything. Now, there's so many coming through, which again is a huge blessing, that you, you have to begin to pick and choose and say, yes, I'm in. That makes sense. No, I love, I love your heart or I love the idea or thank you for the opportunity, but I don't think I can fit that right now, so no thank you. And be willing to say yes, be willing to say no. That's kind of maybe a nugget for another day. But that's the middle zone. Because what I want today is I want to work hard, but I also want to have the freedom. So I'll give you a couple quick examples. Um, when it comes time for an event, I'm going to show up in a live event, but I've learned to build a team around, and it takes time, right? So if you don't have a team right now in your business, start with a team of, of half of a person. Find a part-time assistant or someone to help. Find a volunteer. Find, uh, find your spouse. Find a, a best friend. Um, the first time I ran my, my, my first really workshops and seminars, my, I remember my first four volunteers at really my first and second workshop. It was my girlfriend, who's now my wife, <laughs> Lola, my mom, my dad, and my friend Eugene, who has left us since then. He's passed away. And Eugene, if you're listening, I love you, buddy. I still miss you. Um, Eugene had gone through trainer's training in NLP with me. And, and it was it. It was, it was a friend. It was my girlfriend. It was my parents. So find someone who can help it initially and take a little bit of burden and help you to start to do some things. As we keep going, though, so now, like if I show up in an event today, I'm going to work my butt off during the event. But I, ha- I do have a good team around who has learned how to produce the event, uh, promote the event, put on the event, get the hotel ready, get the stuff ready. And now instead of doing everything, which by the way, in the beginning, my first, I don't know, 100, probably 100, 150 uh, weekend or longer workshops, I had no problem. I was the first one there. I was the last one leaving. I was there all day. I was there all night. Uh, I would help set up. I would tear down. I would do everything. So to me, I've, I've always wanted to be a leader who's willing to be in the trenches. And, and there's just something about that, right? Like if the leader's willing to go first and say, come with me, let's go, like you're going to follow. So even though I'm trying to be smart now where I can't show up and do my best use is not to set up chairs in the hotel as important as that is, that's probably not the highest and best use for who I am today. So I try really hard to focus my best, highest and best use and focus on where my gifting is. And then I have an amazing support team to, to fill in the gaps. My point of that though, is during the events, I'm going to work my butt off. After the events and follow-up, I'm going to work my butt off on follow-up. Um, I have certain projects I'm willing to hustle and work hard on. This podcast is one of them, right? We launched the podcast in February. Um, just you know, broke 5,000 uh, downloads, which, which is great after a couple of months. So, uh, so grateful for all of you that are watching and listening. That doesn't include Facebook, people who are streaming it on YouTube or Facebook and watching the videos. That's just on the, the audio stream. So again, if you're not listening on the audio stream, make sure you go to mattbrowningpodcast.com uh, and then subscribe on the device you're choosing. You can, uh, it'll just be downloaded automatically. You'll get these podcasts that are on Facebook Live. And then every week I also do an interview podcast uh, episode with an entrepreneur where we dive into the origin story. We had a great one last week. If you haven't listened to it, it's with uh, Terry Harden who's uh, just a a phenomenal, phenomenal woman who has an incredible story about growing up with uh, parents of different races in a time when that was really challenging. So we get into a lot of that and what sparked her creativity. And uh, man, she's, she's worked on uh, all sorts of Hollywood movies as a, as a puppeteer running Muppets for Jim Henson for uh, uh, the costumes for the movie Dune for Ghostbusters for Flintstones, a bunch of stuff. So she has, it was just such a fun story connecting with her. So anyway, go back and make sure, uh, you listen to that podcast, uh, the last episode, if you haven't already, I think it dropped on Tuesday. Anyways, where was I? Oh, that's right. You're in the middle of your entrepreneur journey and let's wrap this up and, uh, and get rolling. If you're in the middle of your journey, what you want to do is find a balance. So in the seminar world, I've done so many of them now that I really look for the freedom and I'm willing to work hard in the moment, but before the event, after the event, and in between events for the month off, I don't want to work really, really hard necessarily on the business. 
the team works hard and, and, and they're amazing for what they, like I really have surrounded myself with great people and I do do the work, but I believe I've earned at this point over again, more than a decade doing, doing events and coaching and masterminds and NLP training. I think I've earned the right and the respect to be able to step back and have some lifestyle. So I don't go in the office every day. I don't show up at 5 a.m. and say, I'm ready to hustle and work hard. I stay home. I take Val to school half the morning as Lola and I trade back and forth. Um, I drop him in his classroom. I hold his hand and walk him to his first grade class, and I love that. And then I come home, and I have a cup of coffee, and I read the Bible, and I relax a little bit. And then I get to work at like 10 o'clock. So, but that's not how I started. You get my point? I started hustling. Then I started backing up and working a little easier, a little smarter, a little more freedom. But with new things I'm working on, like the new book coming out, with a podcast launching, with a, a virtual presence, I'm, I'm willing to, to hustle and to work hard with the new ventures so they become where they go. Now, do you think two years from now, once the podcast is really established and cranking and moving along, do you think I, I, I'll try to build a little more lifestyle and freedom into that? Absolutely. But for now, I'm willing to hustle and willing to work hard. That's why we're here right now. It is... I mean, what is it, 4.30, 5.30 right now? And we're hanging out together. So that's what I'm looking for, right? I'm, I'm willing to do that. And, and I hope you are too. It's a lot of fun. The last piece is when you get to the twilight of, of you as an entrepreneur. And what does that look like? To me, that's where freedom fits in. So again, if you haven't already, um, feel free to, to stick a comment below and let me know what do you think. Do you like freedom is the reason for business? Is hard work the reason for business? Um, or do you agree with me? You can just put yes if you agree with me and you can say, yeah, I think it starts with hustle and it ends with freedom. So that's the nugget for today. Be willing to start with hustle, start with hard work, going down a story arc of your life and a story arc of your career as you move towards more and more freedom and lifestyle and give back and, and you know, maybe you don't have a lot of time for charity work or give back early on and you shouldn't because you're hustling your butt off. But as you go on, Hopefully there's more time in your schedule, in your life, and in your space. You have more money as well to give back to things. You have more bandwidth to, to maybe raise money or awareness for something, right? You see actors do this all the time where early on they're hustling their butt off just trying to get a gig. But then down the road you see a Will Smith or an Angelina Jolie who, who's like, hey, my entire purpose at this point is the foundations I'm, I'm creating and, and awareness to a certain cause. And that's awesome because that's what Twilight careers look like. And I'll just mention, I don't mean twilight like that has to be the end. To me, twilight is you're matured, you're, you're set, right? You're established. And then what does the rest of that season look like? So you could have 30, 40 years of twilight, if that makes sense. Um, I, I think a lot of actors, a lot of business people are in that space where now they have the luxury of saying, I'm established, what do, what do I want to do next? So that's my tidbit for today. I know it went a little longer than that. I hope this was a fun, uh, it was a good conversation for me. Hope it was a good conversation for you. Hope we had fun. Um, again, remember mattbrowningpodcast.com. I only do one, I do two episodes a week and one episode is streamed live here on Facebook and that goes to the podcast feed. But the other episode goes right to the audio podcast feed uh, only. So go to mattbrowning.com, subscribe. Feel free to rate and review on iTunes if you want to. That helps a ton, uh, a ton if you don't mind adding an extra review. And... And I think that's it. So that's the episode for this week. Have a great weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. It's going to be, uh, uh, again, you might be listening to this on Friday. So enjoy the weekend. I'm going to come back at you on, on uh, Tuesday morning. We'll drop the next interview episode. And we have a pretty big whopper of an interview coming your way. So watch for that on Tuesday. Love you. Appreciate you. And uh, if you're early in business, get out there and hustle. Get the fire in your belly. Get the passion in your heart. Get out there and do it. If you're in the twilight or approaching that, go enjoy life. Leave the freaking office. Have some fun. Give back. Love on some people. Have an awesome day.